Today we're going to be taking a look at the best supplemental braking systems for your 2002 Honda CRV. Whenever we're flat towing our CRV behind our motorhome, a supplemental braking system is going to be a key component to make sure that we can get down the road safely. We don't want to fully rely on our motorhome to slow down because it already has to slow itself down and then we're going to be adding all this extra weight on top of it. Well, that supplemental braking system is going to help our CRV slow itself down, greatly reducing the distance and time that it takes for us to stop. With our supplemental braking systems, we're going to have a few different kinds available. We're going to have the kind that's going to be more electronic based, it's going to work with any and all motorhomes, and then some that are going to be specifically made for motorhomes that have air brakes, as well as a portable braking system. So let's take a closer look at some of those now. Here we're going to have two that are going to be electronic based. Over here we're going to have the Stay and Play Duo, and then over here we're going to have the Roadmaster Invisibrake. The main difference between the two is that our stay and play is going to be a proportional system, which means that whenever we apply the brakes in our motorhome, it's going to apply them at the same time and intensity to our CRV. Whereas our Invisibrake is going to be a preset system. So when we press on the brake, it's still going to apply the brakes in our CRV, but just to a preset amount. We can still adjust the pressure to apply more or less force, but we're not going to have the same kind of proportional type of braking that we do with the stay and play. Our stay and play is going to apply the brakes and it's going to be operated by the brake signal coming from our RV. So when the brake lights come on, it'll send a signal. But then also inside the car, we're going to have this G-Force controller that's going to have a sensor in it that's going to pick up on the deceleration or the slowing down of our vehicle and match everything up so it eases into those stops. Or if we have a panic stop, it'll apply the brakes rather quickly. Now the way it's going to actually apply the brakes is we're going to have this actuator and this bracket here is going to clamp right around the brake pedal arm and then we'll have an anchor point that's going to mount onto the firewall and the cylinder is going to pull on the brake pedal pushing it down applying the brakes. However with our Invisibrake it's still going to take that brake signal from our RV but it's not going to have that inertia sensor. It's just going to have a preset amount that it's going to apply to and as you can see, our actuator is going to be much larger. But you can also see that there's a cable that's going to be attached to it along with a pulley. The only thing we're going to have to mount onto the brake pedal arm itself is this small section right here. And then our pulley is going to mount on the firewall and we can remotely mount the actuator. It's going to make it a lot easier to hide everything underneath the dash because we're not going to see too much. We're only going to have this small piece here that's not going to interfere with our feet when we're normally driving and so long as we don't have too many bends in the cable we can virtually mount this actuator anywhere. With that being said, mounting the pulley and the cable can be a little bit tricky. You want to make sure that you get the angles right and that the cable isn't going to rub against the side of anything or cause any issues down the road. Having installed our stay and play on a CRV before, these are a little bit easier to install However, there is going to be more visible with the actuator being mounted on the brake pedal arm itself, as well as having to find a spot for the G-Force controller inside the vehicle. Both of these systems are going to be a one-time install without having to set anything up after that. There may be a few minor adjustments as far as the braking force, but we're not going to have to do any extra kind of install after it's initially in. And these both braking systems are going to work with motorhomes that have hydraulic brakes as well as air brakes. Now we do have some options that are specifically for motorhomes that have air brakes and we'll take a closer look at those now. So over here we're going to have our Air Force One and then over here we're going to have our Brake Master. Now both of these are going to be a truly proportional braking system because they're going to connect directly into our motorhome air brakes. So whether we ease into the stop or mash down on the brake pedal, they're going to match that pressure identically and transfer them into our CRV. So with our Air Force One, you'll notice that it's going to be very similar to our SMI, especially with the actuator that we're going to be mounting onto our brake pedal arm. The only main difference is going to be the valve and tank assembly that we're going to have to mount onto our motorhome. Now our Air Force One is going to be a completely permanent installation, so we're not going to have to adjust anything or set anything up after the initial install. Whereas with our Brake Master, it's going to be a semi-permanent installation. We are going to have a tank and valve assembly that we're going to permanently mount onto our CRV underneath the hood, but we're going to have to set this bracket up and actuator each time that we go to tow. Now, the way this is going to work is 
we're going to have to get a seat adapter or a floor plate that this is going to tie into at the back. And then this claw here is going to go and wrap around the brake pedal itself. And it's going to apply the brakes by actuating out and pressing on the brake pedal. So every time we want to drive, we are going to have to remove this or put it in every time we start to tow. So with our Air Force One, we are going to have to deal with a little bit of space constraints just because we are going to have to mount that actuator directly to the brake pedal arm. But the nice thing is, is that once we have it installed, we're not going to have to do anything else. Whereas with our Brake Master, the initial install may be a little bit easier because we are only going to have to mount this cylinder here underneath the hood of our CRV but we are going to have to deal with setting up that actuator or pulling it out every time we want to use our CRV. Now if you don't tow your CRV a whole lot or if you don't feel like doing any kind of permanent modifications, a portable braking system is going to be a good option. Now this one in particular we have the Blue Ox Patriot 2 which again is going to be a portable system but this one is going to be proportional. So we're still going to have that proportional braking so we're going to if we ease into a stop it'll ease on the brakes but again in a panic situation it'll apply them very firmly. One thing to keep in mind with portable braking systems is that they are going to have to require a separate power source. So we're going to have to have a 12 volt outlet kit that is live whenever our CRV is in tow mode. Now our Blue Ox is going to come with a monitor that's going to let us know what's going on in our motor home. Now our portable braking systems are going to have the benefit of being able to move from vehicle to vehicle if we have several that we tow. But keep in mind it is going to add that little bit of extra time every time that we go to tow because we're going to have to get it in our vehicle and set it up. So we hope this information has helped you on deciding which supplemental braking system is going to be right for you and your CRV.